Since adjacent triangles share vertex locations, they are generally stored by first specifying all the vertex positions, and then which faces are composed of which vertices. This method is called face vertex storage. So to use an example here, we could have this 3D coordinate system and then start specifying some vertex positions. So why don't we put vertex A right there and we'll put another one, vertex B over here. And I'll use a different color here for vertex C. And let's add a fourth vertex as well. How about, how about vertex D? Put that right there. And we'll need to store our vertex coordinates. So we'll put in the coordinates for vertex A here. It looks like it's about maybe, uh, one on the X, uh, one on the Y, and zero on the Z. So just put that in here, one, one, zero. Uh, vertex B. I'm just going to estimate here, looks like it's about, well, uh, one, two, maybe, maybe two, two, and uh, one on the Z axis. My drawing isn't too accurate here, but we'll just estimate the positions. So two, two, one. And we've got a, a third vertex here, and that, uh, that might be at one two, maybe three on the y and uh, uh, one on, sorry, th three on the x-axis, one on the y-axis, three, one, and uh, maybe that's maybe four deep. And give ourselves some more space here. And we'll put in vertex D. And it looks like that's about, maybe at about uh, three, two, and uh, well, maybe that's uh, that's about four and a half on the Z axis. So three, two, four point five. All right, so there's our vertex positions. And alongside this set of vertex positions, we'll also specify uh, the faces, which vertices are used to construct each face. So we'll have another set of values here. We're only going to construct two polygons here. But we could say that uh, A, B, and C form one polygon. And so that'll be A. Right, I'll, put these in, I'll put these in parentheses because they're not really vectors. Um, they're more, more like references to the individual vertices. So we'll just store a list of tuples here. So we could say that A, B, and C. A, B, and C form a one face. And then we could also say that uh, B, C, and D form the other face. So B, C and D there that uh, that gives us that gives us our other polygon. There are a few further optimizations to this that are sometimes used in polygon storage, such as triangle strips and triangle fans. So with a triangle strip, we simply have a row of uh, triangles with their vertices sort of arranged in this kind of zigzag pattern. And we can just connect these all together. And you'll notice that each of these polygons uh, shares two vertices with the preceding polygon. So uh, we can avoid duplicating some information here uh, because we know that, uh, well, each additional vertex, that's just going to create uh, another polygon on the end of this triangle strip. There's also the triangle fan where we have one vertex that's common to a number of other vertices, right? So that, that one vertex would start in the middle here, and then we could have a few vert vertices surrounding it, like this. And so again, we can avoid duplicating information here because we know that this first vertex is common 
to the rest of them. 3D software can also store quads and engons, as these types of polygons are frequently required by an artist in order to build a model. In this case, more component IDs are stored for a given polygon. As a quick example of how polygon information might be stored by your 3D software, let's take a look at three different Maya scene files. All right, so this one uh, just has a regular cube in it, uh, just with quad faces. We've got another one where the faces of the cube have been triangulated, so uh, just, just triangles in this one, no quads. And we've got a third scene file uh, with some n-gons, so these faces uh, on the top and bottom there, they actually are composed of five vertices. Uh, so, so yeah, a combination of quads and uh, a couple n-gons in this one. When you save a Maya scene file as Maya ASCII, or with the .ma file extension, uh, you can open it with a text editor. It's just a, a, a regular text file. And if we scroll down here to uh, where this, uh, where this uh, polygon information is stored, we can see the uh, unique way, actually, that Maya goes about doing this. It's a bit different than uh, just uh, straight up uh, face vertex uh, storage. Uh, but we can we can learn a little bit about how Maya stores its geometry. All right, so first we can see that uh, we have a set of eight vertices being stored, right from zero to seven. Uh, and we have the uh, coordinates of each of those vertices stored here. We also have twelve edges being stored, and we can see right down here uh, the faces that are being stored. And it's kind of interesting, uh, Maya actually stores uh, face information by specifying, well, first, how many edges uh, will compose the face, and then secondly, by storing the edge IDs, right? So uh, Maya doesn't actually store vertex information per face, it constructs its faces uh, from edges, which is kind of interesting. Right, so this was the file for the cube that was made of quads. Let's con contrast that with the file where all the faces were triangulated. So, same number of vertices. Uh, we have, in this case, 18 edges and, uh, of course, quite a few more uh, faces. In this case, each face has only three edges, and these are the IDs of the edges yeah, that compose that face. All right, and we can also pull up the file for the, uh, the, the cube with the n-gons in it, right? So uh, a couple more vertices in this case, uh, a few more edges. And here we can see, well, there was a quad polygon. It has four edges, but here's an n-gon. It has five edges. Um, and, and we can see the edge IDs right there. All right, so every uh, 3D modeling package uh, might be a little bit different. And this is the, this is the way that Maya stores this information.